to Face the Facts for the 100th episode of our show. I know, it's amazing that it's been 100. This is 100 shows that Face the Facts has done with the great people of North Reading and our friends at NorCam TV. They brought us in back in 2014, and we have now officially hit the books with 100 episodes. How about that? So on our special 100th episode, I have a lot to go over. I'm pretty fired up today because there's a lot of things that have been happening with the NFL. The Celtics have got under my skin once again with a certain familiar foe chiming in, of course. And big kudos go to Coach Bruce Cassidy and the Bruins for a little jump start and a kick in the butt for the team that needed it so severely. Joining us today on our 100th episode is Tom Smith. He did have a Patriots hat on, but he was forced to remove that hat. I don't know, maybe he just took it off himself. (laughs) And we also have Phil Healy in the house. How are we guys today? Not bad, not bad. It's Friday. Good. The weather is nice. Yeah, I just took a nice walk, and I just don't want to come back in. It was pretty no. nice out. So you definitely, definitely spring is in the air, which is great. And for this week. spring, but it's, I think everybody's starting to see that light at the end of the tunnel now. We are starting to get back to semi normal a little bit with our life, which is outstanding. Um, we all needed it. It has been officially one year since we have been now in this pandemic. And I think everybody would agree with me on this statement that they are done. It is time to live your life. Kudos to those that were continuing to live their life and those that were in the bunker, get yourself out of the bunker and start getting yourself ready to live again. So little face to facts message of the day. What I would like to talk about on our show today, we have the Bruins, like I said, we have the Celtics, we have uh, the Patriots and the rest of the NFL with some news and a little bit of baseball as well, too. I would like to start first, though, with the Boston Bruins. The Bruins deserve to be first because guess what? They're better than the Celtics. Sorry, folks. They are. What? Sorry, Phil. They, yeah, of course. Don't need to burst your bubble, but sorry. No, nothing to burst. <laughs> nothing. I'm not in delusion land. Mm, like other people in this land are. Um, I was very happy with the last game that the Bruins had, which was against the Rangers. Let's be honest here. The Bruins have struggled in the past, what would you say, Tom, about two weeks since Lake That's, Tahoe? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, last I night was they a left game. Their, I think they left their sorrows out on the lake. Probably. Uh, I mean, some some players just need to step up and um, we're fortunate enough that they were able to do so after being healthy scratches a couple of games ago. Um, I will say, though, Halak still looked kind of sketchy, even though he did get the uh, shutout. Um, but there were points where it was a little little nerve-wracking watching. Well, right now, you don't really have a choice because Tuker is hurt. I don't know how hurt he is, but he's hurt. And you don't have any other choice right now but to go with Halak for the most part. So I know you think he's shaky. I know you know he's older. Yes, Puka Rask is your number one goaltender, but I mean, I think we can be honest here and say that that's the best one-two punch goaltending still in the league. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's I'm not too concerned with him being a net, um, but he. It's just how many is, games in a row he can go. That's I right. Think that's what we're concerned on. I mean, yeah, and both and both goalies are um, are in con- contract years. Um, Halak technically is only, you know, was only signed for this season after last season. Um, but yeah, he's still playing for it. For I mean, maybe he's playing for another contract. Maybe I know he's the Bruins retire. have already come out and said that they're interested. They want they want both Rask and Halak back. So whether that gets done during in season or off season, um, I think I think that Tuka still absolutely has shown he wants to be here. The matter the matter of can, can he get over this, the, the hump that of winning a Stanley Cup? That's going to be the big thing here. So the message sent Wednesday at practice for this team was one of the greatest probably coaching decisions and messages that I have seen a sports organization do in a long time. 
I heard from a lot of people who follow the team that it was one of the miracle-esque kind of practices that this team has had in quite some time. I, I, I know I don't like to you know, swear and everything on shows like this. It's family friendly, but you know, anything goes on the hundredth episode. They were pissed. The organization from the top down and the message was crystal clear. Get your shit together or go sit on the bench. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. And I mean, I know, I know in the past, there have been times where you haven't liked Don Sweeney, Cam Neely, whatever but um i mean they they do do care about the team and uh on, to be honest i'm kind of liking how the team's looking most most games you know with all the young it's players and pride the, too. the bruins know what they can do they've been there they've done that they've produced there is no excuse why david Krejci has one goal on the season right now yes he did score in this last game against the rangers which is great but it needs to start getting consistent here. Jake DeBrusque, healthy scratch Tuesday against the Islanders. Well, that sitting down butt kicking that he got resulted in getting reinserted into the lineup on Thursday. There is no question that was the best game Jacob DeBrusque has played this season. I agree. Will that continue over is the, is the big story here. Um, the other thing which was pretty interesting, the last game, which was against the Rangers, was the first time picks 13, 14, and 15 from, I believe, the 2017, 16 draft, something like that, which was um, uh, Zaboro, uh, that was DeBrusque and Zach Senison were in the lineup. I totally feel that if the veterans or the players that have become complacent and not getting the job done aren't going to produce, let the younger guys fight it out and get it done. Let them fight it out. Like Chris Wagner, if you're not going to do anything, you're done. They did it to Corrali the other, another night earlier. You're not going to skate and you're not going to produce. Sit down. Next man up. Like no, yeah, I mean, all, 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 no the young guys, all the young guys are coming to play. I mean, uh, Trent Frederick has a fire under his butt for. Uh, I love him. Oh, uh, he's I mean, phenomenal. I love I love watching him play, and uh, you know he is fearless on the ice. He doesn't care if he's going after Ovechkin, Tom Wilson. He'll go. He'll go bloodbath and all. I love and, it. And uh, that kid Tenorti, who they brought up recently, he's been he's been playing pretty well in the past three or four games. He's been playing in the Bruins had a, a great game last Friday night, which was against the Capitals. And I think we all know the name Tom Wilson. He's the, one of the biggest imbeciles in hockey. That's putting it lightly. And he decided that he's going to go up and, and do a big hit on the head of Brandon Carlo. So Carlo has been out probably still for another probably two, three weeks. That concussion's got to heal. And the Bruins response back was just electric. It sent Washington a message that said, don't be, don't go screwing with one of our top guys because we're not accepting it. The statement that was made by Martian and Bergeron and even McAvoy and uh, our our new guy that that came in Tanuti Tanuto whatever you call his name is whatever his name is, what, just epic. You yeah. need that, but I'm I want to see it more consistent. They started out guns blazing, guns blazing. They need to continue to grind and hustle and win these games. So I'm happy with the last performance. They play again. It will be Saturday afternoon. Um, is that the Devils? Uh, Rangers again. Rangers again. Rangers not that great of a team. I expect another win. Okay. It's, it's Everybody thought they were happy. going to be so good this year. Nope. 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 So we, I think we've only lost that, to them that's once. the one thing I don't like with this schedule is you're not, you're, you're playing so many of these teams so many times in this short season. Well, it's so. just, it's, it's, it's just because of, um, because of the change up in the divisions because of COVID and everything. I mean, we don't, we anybody. play Buffalo. We play Buffalo for the first like time this season on, uh, I think Monday. Yeah, it is. Or no, they, uh, 
It's they played bad. Penguins back to back Monday and Tuesday, and then they play the Sabers on the 18th for the first yeah, time this it's season. Coming up, and the Sabers are not very good. They should well, be, but they're not. We we thought the Islanders weren't very good either, and look what what look what they've been doing to us. For whatever reason, with the Islanders, they're always in it. I think it has a lot to do with uh, Barry Trost, their head coach. You know, he's he's great, and he leads and. That that's a team that it scares me still. In a series, I, I would not want to play the Islanders. No, I really wouldn't. Same goes with the Capitals. They scare the crap out of me. I think the Capitals are. I think the Capitals are a little bit better than the Bruins right now. Could that I think, maybe? I I think the Capitals could beat us in a series, but I also think that we could push a seven and possibly win it as well. Yeah, you just you just don't know in any of this. I, I just don't have Bruins, faith that I don't have faith against the Islanders if we get them in a series. No, so. I, I I don't have much faith in that in that end either. But you know, the, hopefully the best is yet to come. The trade deadline is coming up, and they are definitely. I'm assuming Tom, you feel that moves should be made. I'm feeling like there could be moves made, and I think that there. I think that's part of the reason why we're seeing a lot of these young guys coming up into the lineup um, for multiple games, not just like one or two games to get them in, you know, the NHL experience. I think they're coming up for a few games partially because guys are injured, but at the same time, I think, I think uh, management wants to see how the, they do at the NHL level and see how, if we can move them for something. Any particular, any particular players out there that you would take a flyer on? Um, what's the biggest need? Defenseman. Okay. I think we need, I think we need a veteran defenseman. Okay. I would um, agree on that. I think we're too young on that end. I think the there's a possibility. Big. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm still not sold. I think if somebody, if, if you really were going to change it up, say DeBrus gives you a good week. I trade him. Oh, well, I was going to say that I think the has, I think some DeBrusque has some value to other teams. I don't know if he would hold, I don't know if he holds as much value to us anymore as he did when we first drafted him. But I will um, say if he's out, then you got to figure out what you're going to do at your second, your second line. Yeah. Because if Krejci's still going to struggle, say, say DeBrus does get traded or whatnot. Well, that's another person that now comes in with David Krejci to work with. I don't know if that's super fair to Krejci. I think they would probably I, I they would probably move Coyle up to the second line. That's another name. Are you happy with his performance this year? Offensively, no. Defensively, I think he's you know, I think he's a big key part uh, when there's Who's a defensive zone. Untouchable for the Bruins right now. Say you have five untouchables. Uh, Pasenak. Okay. Um. A healthy Tuca. Okay. Um, Marshan. Bergeron, Marshan. Okay. I would put McAvoy in there. Either McAvoy or Carlo. McAvoy's I mean, I, been I, their best defender this season, I think. Yes, he's had to bumps her in the road, but his his performance in the last month has been pretty good. You should be pretty yeah. happy with what you see. He needs, to and, put and he needs to put the puck in the net a lot, but I I like how he's elevated his game. I see a difference from last year versus now. Uh, Brandon Carlo, if he comes back healthy, what do you do with Carlo? Put him back in the lineup. Okay. I would feel much better with Carlo than without. I think um, Kevin Miller needs to get his ass back. I'm getting real fed up. I mean, how can you, though, get fed up? You knew what you were getting when this stupid move was made in the off season. He's an injury prone defenseman. Move on. Um, I, I think, I think Car when Carlo comes back, I think he sends Zaboro back down, keep Tenorti up because Tenorti's really got that spunk got that the they iron. need on the defense. He he's physical. Um, and he's got the big body. Like he's yeah. not, he's not just like tall. He's, he's very broad and, you know, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think there's a possibility of Zaboro maybe having some value to teams. Um, I think DeBrusque and... It's a name we haven't mentioned yet. It has something to do with your last name. Oh, Craig Smith. I don't like him. Nothing to do with your last name. Sorry. I know it's Smith and all. You probably have some <laughs> attachment to him or whatnot, but... What a boring, vanilla, crap signing. He's nothing. He I mean, Come on, I see you going, what the hell has he done this year? Nothing. He's, he's good in the defensive zone. Oh. He's a good defensive forward. Move on. He's a good defensive forward. Yeah, yeah. And him and Richie play well together, so I, I, like, I like the chemistry there. Richie's another name. He's... Too inconsistent. I don't. I don't love him. I'm he's sorry, up and down. I don't. He's good. He's good he's for three games. He's got goals because he's... he was with Bergeron and Marchand on the first line for a bit. I'm sorry. You're not that he, good guy. You're they, not. They need him on the power play. That's really why they. Oh, the only reason why they keep him. They don't need him on a pop. Come on. Really? How many big bodies do you have out there? I'd rather put you out there. I mean, I'd be scoring goals left and right, but hey, I mean, what can I he's say? there. He's 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 a decoy, right? Yeah, and that's exactly he, where they have him. Numbers are elevated, and I don't want to. It is what it is. It's great that he has statistically good numbers. Yeah, just but like a lot. Rebounds, the little oops, there it goes. Like, that's what he's. That's what. That's the point, though. How many? How many times have you heard a hockey coach say, stay in the front of the net and dig out the trash? Well, he is a piece of trash. I'll tell you that. So, hey, if the trash comes out smelling like roses and they win, I guess it is what it is. But I, I think you can find better. I do. Oh, Overall, I'm saying, I, I, my thing is, is um, Don Sweeney's got some work to do. I'm I, not happy with what I see currently right now. I would still make changes. I'm not looking too heavily into this fired up this production for one game, it's the Rangers. They've kind of had a suck season. So what are you going to do against big teams? Like Tampa, you haven't played Tampa yet. How are you going to do against them? How are you going to do against uh, another game against the Islanders? Let, let's see what you got here. So I, I want to see what happened. Penguins could be a good statement kind of game. I know they're, at least they have the names. At least they have the names. Whether they <laughs> produce or not is the big thing. So. I mean, I, the, I think I, here on, on, at least the, on the Bruins side of things. I just think, I just think, I mean, I know you say you could do better than they can do better than Richie, but I mean, how much cheaper can you get than Richie? I, I just mean like other players. Again, numbers are great. I, I, if the numbers are good, that that's wonderful and all. But I'm sorry, Richie still looks like he's a a, 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 a Joe Schmo, a providence bruin send me up express train player I, he just does he screams that at me <laughs> he still screams it at me so I, i'll gladly be wrong if he wants to go and have 20 25 goals this season listen you you, you just Kudos you just you. spoke the magic you just spoke the magic words just watch <laughs> just watch i'm not saying i'm not saying a damn thing anymore <laughs> I have to be the one to fire up certain people. You know how I am, and I have a, I have an amazing track record with it. He's gonna so, score ten goals. In I am games. ringing. I am ringing that bell so bad right now to Nick Ritchie, ringling a ding ding or whatever you want to call it. So let's see what happens there. <laughs> Speaking of ringing bells, oh boy, here we go, wake, Phil. It's time Phil. to wake up, Phil. <laughs> and I, I'm trying to do work. <laughs> oh, wow. guys, well, you guys are messing around. Well, we're going to put you to work right now. Trust me. So, <laughs> Don't buddy worry. Your, your buddy, we played your buddy last night. Yeah, we hang out. So what? Oh, I, is, we have a couple, is, is we have a couple of drinks. Uh, no, but that is my favorite uh, bit about him. He actually, well, I don't know if I lost you guys, but uh, I remember when he first hey, joined yeah, the team. Terrible. There he is. Now he's back. No, hey, what up? No, I just you, got you, you cut out. <laughs> I know, froze. yeah, mate. It's Were yeah, I froze buddy? for a bit. Kyrie. No, I fell off the earth. Uh oh, that's what you I, get. Uh, no, I actually in all seriousness, I had 
it was funny because as soon as he got signed, you know, like I think it was like three years ago, I forget when it was before the season began, I was at a con and there was a guy, you know, they, uh, those, so like comic and I was at the Rhode Island comic con doing some panel stuff. And I was walking the floor and I saw this guy, a t-shirt booth and just had a, a Celtics, you know, shirt instead of Celtics, uh, you know, where it usually has right here. It had it just said flat earth. No, it said Celtics and it had Kyrie's number. And on the back, it just says flat earth. And it was the best thing I ever saw. I'm like, oh, and clearly it's an ironic thing where I don't believe the earth is flat, but it was it was the most beautiful thing. I'm like, and I was happy as a pig in uh, mud that he was showing up on the team because that was a big signing at the time. Uh, but yeah, no, I was, uh, I was ecstatic to watch him eviscerate the Celtics. It was the best to see that decision. <laughs> just kind of blow up in our out face. Of the equation and didn't watch. I mean, yeah, I, but I you say that was the right decision for me. But for you, you said at the top of the show that like this, I something about the that's the Celtics. Like you made it seem like it was the Celtics who like made Kyrie this person in your head. Do we? No, no, the Celtics but, didn't do that. It was more the media driven. I I agree on that, Phil, with you. No, but you were yeah. angered by. I just didn't know. Like, you're yeah, the media, the media, the media is what drew Kyrie out of here. Let's be honest here. One of the major yeah. reasons the media uh, the media torturized him. Uh, well, that's a new word we could we could throw in there, but it also I also think he I, don't I mean think physical I just mean mental. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I, I just I think that happened. I think also he wanted to play somewhere else. He wanted to be in New York, and I also I think you're I think all shades of this are true. You know what I mean? Not everything's completely true. I think like yeah, he definitely wanted to be in the limelight in New York. He definitely wanted to play with uh, Kevin Durant, and you know he wanted to be the he, one of the guys, if not, no, the guy on the team. And maybe it's because of like Brown and uh, Tatum that that wasn't going to happen. But you know, regardless, I watched the I didn't watch all of the game last night. I had work to do. I saw the second half on, but my buddy was texting live texting me as things went on in the first half. And you know, I, the Celtics didn't play a bad game, and Marcus Smart was back in the lineup, and he was great. His impact was immediately felt. Um, Tatum had a decent game. He should have gotten b- the ball more as it, uh, uh, towards the end of the game. Kemba didn't really perform. Like he wasn't hitting shot. He, I saw him miss like two or three shots that he got decent looks at. Uh, they wasn't hitting and Jalen Brown didn't have the best game, but you know what? Uh, I don't know. I think it's going to be uh, the Nets and Philly in the Eastern conference finals. I mean, maybe you can get there. I, I, I don't know. I think that's very logical, Phil. I don't know. I like how Philly's playing. I like how the, the Nets and Katie's not even playing. Think about how much better they are than you. And Katie isn't even on the floor. The question will be, is this roster that's put together with Brooklyn a better assembled cast than it was with Golden State? Uh, it's got a good bench. You have a true... Like Curry's a good second to KD, no doubt about it, Steph Curry. And uh, Clay Thompson's an amazing, like, third option. I mean, Harden's a good option here, too. He's a good third option. And he actually played some uh, decent D down the stretch. I at think one point. the most surprising thing this year is after all of the commotion that, co- what, that came about with James Harden not being in shape and yeah. all that, he's having a phenomenal season. Yeah, he's doing pretty well with Brooklyn, and he's settling I'm nicely surprised in that. that. Uh, I really am. Yeah, of course. I'm big time still surprised with Brooklyn. I'm not saying I'm a fan of Brooklyn, but I thought these divas would self destruct. Yeah. I do. Uh, you know what? If they win it, no, they could. There's time there. I don't think that. I think the talent will far outweigh it. I do too. And, but also, let's let's keep it. Let's understand that. Or be honest that Harden hasn't won one. Maybe this is a chance for him. Like he sees this as that shot. And An Blake, they, you can't blow yeah. the opportunity. No, and it, they just got Blake Griffin, who will be coming off the bench. Right. And they have some, you know, decent bench players. Uh, Shamut is a great three point shooter. They have a couple of young guys who can play D. And like even like the, the pieces they dismantled to get Harden, you still have the good core, which without Kyrie or, um, Kevin Durant went to the playoffs last year and made some made a little bit of noise and you know against uh, the Bucks I believe but you know what man I uh yeah I, I think the Nets are on their way and they're a really good team and they're only going to get better and we'll see what happens when Kevin Durant steps in mm-hmm. and like how that shuffles things a little bit but I like whom whomever comes out of the West will have a hard time with them 
And the story yeah. though from the game, yes, it was Marcus Smart's return. There's no doubt about it. That was missed, and 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 the Celtics definitely needed him back, which was great. Um, it was after the game. It was the camera and the media all following Kyrie. And at the end of the game, Kyrie goes over and hugs certain members of the Celtics and just has some sort of camaraderie back and forth with a few of the others. There were two names from me watching and observing that I was very much thinking, wow, why did Jalen Brown, why did Brad Stevens not not do anything, not do anything with um, talking to Kyrie or going over to him or anything like that, which made me wonder, was Jalen Brown and Brad Stevens one of the big reasons why Kyrie did not want to play in Boston anymore? What do we think? I mean, yeah, I mean, I didn't, I can't say that I didn't see Jalen Brown in there. I definitely didn't. I saw all the players around him. So I can't, I'd have to look again to see like where Brown was, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, of course there's a possibility of that too. And I think it's a combination of all that stuff of what Kyrie wanted and you know, what the organ, just like with any team and what the organization was looking to do, but I don't know, man, that was, um, and Brown didn't have the best of nights. I think he was, he was played pretty well as far as defensively, but also he made, he kind of, he folded a little under some bits of pressure. He played, he made some decent plays, but wasn't fully there. But yeah, I don't, uh, I don't debate that he clashed, Kyrie clashed with Stevens. I mean, I technically, I think he's still clashing with, um, uh, what's the name of the Nets? Uh, Steve Nash. Well, I always forget that he's the coach. I mean, that should tell you something that he's just kind of just forgettable in that in that mix of talent steve nash an mvp uh, uh two-time mvp uh former player who's now the the coach is the first time coaching too i think at least as a head coach yeah i don't know but yeah i don't so to your question oh, went back and forth in the press yeah. conference and Kyrie's just basically like oh you guys this is what you guys all created you want to shit talk me that's exactly what he said about all my friends and things that I've made with the Celtics and everything, keep on trashing me and whatnot. Kyrie creates his own his drama or whatever. In a way. He, he yeah. creates his own his own demons. If the guy just yeah, doesn't, sure. if he just shut up, he would take care of so much other other things instead of damage control on his name. I mean, maybe he doesn't care. Clearly, he doesn't. But no, it's. I don't think um, that's one of the reasons why so many people can't stand the guy. Again, I don't like yeah. the word hate, but he's one of the most hated <laughs> individuals that has ever represented the city of Boston in sports. You know, you that's know, that's a big one. Do you really think he's one of the oh, most absolutely. hated? Yeah, absolutely, he's hated. I don't know. And the reason I mean, the one of the most. Is, it, I mean, it starts with him saying, "Oh, if you guys would accept me back, you know, I would, I would come back and be the future here of the Celtics." With that stupid thing. Oh yeah, the Celtics night. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, he created his own. He's his own worst nightmare. Yeah, and I think Mike Reese said it pretty well. I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, who, who knows what he's going to say the next day? That's kind of the ebb and flow of Kyrie Irving. And he said it then. He said, "Like, I don't necessarily trust that because Kyrie Irving says a lot of things and." He kind of rides on these he emotions of. He just doesn't know when to shut up. Yeah, that's yeah. Of course, that's a lot of it, and he wants to. Doesn't be think. Important. He, sometimes, people get themselves in trouble when they don't think. Sometimes, when they speak, I'm guilty. I yeah, we have a whole show dedicated to it. Shut up and never said a damn thing. Mm. And you learn from it. Well, this idiot doesn't learn. Oh, he doesn't have to. What are the consequences? Exactly. That's what the are the thing. consequences? You're it doesn't matter. You don't have to learn. Us people, us hardworking middle class, you know, people, if we say something that could be represented the wrong way, it could ruin your life. Well, speak for yourself. I don't work that hard. So I mean, let's oh. but no, but I think I think a lot of people can skate by on saying stuff depending on how they are and how clever they are at it. But I right. think it's a matter of you know, with him, you know, he's got more of a spotlight on him. And he's also like he had he also, you know, like I said, he doesn't have to abide by certain things and if he gets fined he gets fined uh by the league or by whomever it's the league probably i mean uh, or the team yeah 
uh, to talk or say what uh, say whatever he feels. Uh, but yeah, no, it was – and a buddy of mine who I was, you know, live texting as it was going by, as the game was going, uh, he was like, yeah, I'm very – at the end, he's like, yeah, I'm very confused by just, you know, what we've been told as far as, like, you know, the the animosity between Celtics players and Kyrie. We're just, like, hugging – they're all hugging it out. And it looked genuine. It looked like, a you know, they were, they were legit moments of uh, – That's what Kyrie wanted. camaraderie. Oh, let's all kumbaya and love each other. I mean, other. but – yeah, but, I mean, people say that are just the same people who are, like, it's a weird conspiracy. It's like, well yeah. – yeah, some but, people just want a straight negative, like, oh, look at this jerk. Look what he did. Like, that kind or, of you know, Occam's Razor, the like more, me. most, uh, the most, what was it, uh, reasonable answer, or the, or the most sensible answer, Occam's Razor, the most simplest explanation is often the right one. Like, yeah, he had he had a good relationship with all these people. He just wanted to do this one thing, and uh, the organization didn't see it a certain way, and he just did what he could. I mean, and that was... You know, he seems like a volatile guy enough in that space. Maybe not with his teammates and maybe not with inter real interpersonal relationships. But as far as like the business of the NBA, maybe he's more volatile than he's worth. And we'll see as far as with the Nets. And let's see if they win a, a championship there, what he'll do in the next year. I forget what his contract situation is, but well, but I mean, to the rest of the Celtics, like – like I said, they didn't play a bad game. Could they have been better? Sure. But they still kind of, they lost at the end of that game. It was like a 13 to three run in the last four minutes that like the Nets had over them. And they lost by like 11 points or a little, a little more, a little less. I forget the exact score, but you know, they need people, they need talent. This year isn't going to do it. And they're going to, they're going to have to build. And I actually know who was amazing in that game. Robert Williams. Robert Williams was all over the floor. He blocked, he blocked a Harden shot. He like, he stuck to Harden and he blocked him on Harden's own turn. Like Harden. I, I like way Robert playing. Williams more than Daniel Tice. I will be up, absolutely up. I like them. That. I like them both, but I think Robert Williams has a higher ceiling. Yes, I, do. I think, I think Tice, he's not like a big, big. I think he's a great complimentary yeah. um, player. And, you know, I didn't see Thompson. Tice. Seems like he always complains. Oh, really? He, oh, he mean when he, uh, yeah. Oh, it's, it, yeah. It, it's brutal. Like, <laughs> they all guy, complain. Like, every, every time someone touches him, it's like it's yeah. the end of the world sometimes. But, he got a good shot in the gut from Harden, though, on the way up. He got a good shot in the gut. So the Celtics have two games off after this all-star break. They next uh, play against uh, James Harden's old team, the Houston. Yeah, he, uh, the Houston we're pretty bad. Which right will now. be Sunday, Sunday evening. So that's the next game out there. I do want to change topics because technically today we should have been leading off with this, but I wanted to get the other two out first because now, as Tom, uh, as you can see from his expression on his face, if you're a New England Patriots fa uh, fan, I don't know how you're happy today. I don't know how you're happy. I should, you should, you, you should, I should be as happy as a clam uh, on a hundredth episode, but I am pissed. I am pissed. So today we learned that the New England Patriots, who have basically turned into the Miami Dolphins now, have re-signed Cam Newton. He's back, folks. One year, $14 million so that has been. And Tom Brady has announced from the box that he has a potential to be playing another four years with the box. It's at least playing till 2022 with two options left. He did a massive team contract so they can not have to take so much in their salary cap. This is single-handedly the worst decision a New England Boston team has made in their history. It is worse than Babe Ruth getting traded to the New York Yankees, folks. It's worse. The Patriots should be ashamed of themselves. Ashamed of themselves for the direction that they decided to go. But number two, not having an answer on who the successor was going to be for Brady. And number three, for choosing Tom Brady over Bill Belichick. You know my stance on what I felt. The production outweighs what you get from your head coach. It's all about you, what you do on the field. Players are more important than your coach. Absolutely. 
And to put all your money into Belichick versus Brady is a sin. I'll leave it at that. Let's open up the discussion. Tom. Phil. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, all right. I'm surprised yeah. you don't have no, I don't I'm surprised you don't have a number one staple to your shirt right now. Oh, for yeah, well, you know what? It fell off. Oh I had it earlier. Yeah, I don't I you know I know I joke on the show about my love of Cam Newton, but I oh it was so weird. I my same buddy who was talking about regarding uh, uh, watching the Celtics with via text. He just sent me the um, the Cam Newton thing this morning, and we were talking last night about you know we uh, minus the Bruins, we might be heading, and the Celtics will get there I think in a couple of years. But minus all that, I think we're in a going to be in a stone uh, or a dark age or an ice age uh, regarding Boston sports. And you know, honestly, we've had a good run of almost twenty years. And yeah, do I think this is the craziest or the stupidest decision since trading? Babe Ruth? Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe. If he wins like two more championships, then I think, yeah. I think then probably. Because then it's like, at least with Babe Ruth, they, someone was able to fund a play that they really wanted to do. Yep. But I, it, it's crazy. I mean, I, but you know what? I, I was on board, not necessarily with backing Bill, but letting Brady go and getting the rebuild start started. I'm so on board for that. Because I, you know what, we'll see what happens. I, I, listen, I'm in it for the long haul because it's not going to, you know, the NFL isn't going to disappear in two years. You know, we're going to, we're going to be watching it as far as I'm concerned until, well, maybe at one point be like, yeah, I'm okay. Like when we're on our deathbed, but who knows? Maybe it's a really good game. That's all you want to go out. But, you know, I think life will exist beyond Brady and Belichick. So, I mean, and hopefully not go into the Steve Belichick, but who knows? Tom, Nick, Bill, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and all the other people watching. Um, what were we talking about? Uh, who were we talking about? <laughs> that quarterback uh, that used to play for the Patriots. Remember his name? Maybe not. I don't know. You know, no, the one that's still playing. TV, tubercul- and tuberculosis. And the, that, 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 that sinful organization that decided that Tom Brady was done. That 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 team, and Cam um, Newton is the answer. That team, I don't even want to name that team because I'm I'm just too disgusted with whatever the hell direction they're deciding to go. Yeah, I mean, so I'm what are we all it. done winning championships around here? Is that is that what we've done? We're throwing in the towel. We're done. I, I'm in agreement. Really, with that's the I message. Think, I think I think we should have. I, I I think we were ready to start a rebuild. Um. Do I think Cam Newton is the answer? Absolutely not. Yeah, that definitely didn't show it last year. No. Um, maybe the first couple of games, but I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe he'll surprise us again this year. But oh, I don't know. Please. Well, but, but here I've, heard, I've I've listened to sports radio today because I've done other deliveries and stuff, and there's so many pe- people calling in. Oh, think positive. Cam's going to get this wonderful thing done with his arm and everything's going to be a great. robot arm. We're going to stock up all these different free agents and th- things are going to be back to normal. <laughs> get a freaking grip people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh I, don't, my God. I don't think it'll ever be back to normal though. I mean, like no. what is normal? No. I mean, also some of these idiots don't know what it was like before Brady. Like I know you guys have maybe a, uh, uh, Maybe weren't really cognizant of it. I'm 38. Bledsoe. I was a Bledsoe era. Yeah, Bledsoe, like even before Bledsoe, I remember like a couple of years, like a year when Zolak was like your quarterback for like most uh, a handful of games. You know, kudos, I would actually take Scott Zolak right now at almost 60 years old as my quarterback. I mean, first maybe game. him in that game. wonky eye, I think he could do it. But I think he could. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't think he could do it in this He was NFL. talking about it on the radio today, actually. He said, you know what? No, throw you have a better in. chance than me being your quarterback. And you know what? He's damn right. I mean, the game is too damn fast. It's even faster now. So I don't know if he could. Uh, but yeah, no, I listen. 
I don't think what anyone here thinks affair that Belichick with Cam Newton has with 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 Cam Newton. That's that, that's well, what I want to know. Well, here's like, the question: Does Belichick have like some sort of secret secret space or secret stuff like stash of like, oh, we have to keep Cam because if we don't mm. keep Cam, something's gonna pop out of the bottle and yeah, the screwed. body. He knows where the okay. bodies are buried. Like, yeah. is there a body hidden? Is 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 there some like affair going on, like with Linda? Well, I don't mean. Well, to let's 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 this is let's a family show here. But well, I don't know. I family to... it is the Manson family, yeah. A family feud, let's... maybe. But I don't know what well, they know is Nick, going it, on. Do you think? Do you think they're? Survey says. Do you think they're going to? They signed him in. Steve Harvey pops out. No. Okay, I'm done. No, Harvey is always here. Don't dismiss him. He can't be killed. But do you think that? Um, do you think that Newton is a, uh, you know, is he being signed to be retained here uh, to keep a, a depth at quarterback? And do you think they're going to draft and or try to get another person in there for competition? Because what is the situation with the contract? Is the contract null and void it's if he doesn't make the run? Kind of similar to last year's. Okay, so is so it, it like taxes out at fourteen if he hits all those incentives? What is it at now? No, it's not going to happen. Yeah, I don't. We don't know how much yet is guaranteed on the deal. We do know that there is a release thing where if he doesn't make the team, it's not guaranteed money. So yeah, that's a positive. I mean, I would, I would like to think that I, I hope, and if I'm wrong, then shame on the path. But also, I mean, we'll see how everything plays out. Not to be positive, but just to say, I mean, I don't really know. I'm not the organization, so I don't know what the hell they're thinking. But hopefully, hopefully, it's them um, like just oh we. He's here for depth. We're going to get a couple other options in there and they're going to, you know, play out and see who we have. I mean, I hope, or and, but Hey, I also hope that, uh, you know, Belichick goes all in on defense. Honestly, maybe gets a couple more weapons, not a lot for cam. Cause it's like, who's it? It's not that he, it's not that he doesn't have anyone to throw to as much as he needs to learn how to throw to people. And, you know, like Tom said, the first couple games, he actually was pretty decent. But, you know, and who knows if COVID or whatever else, you know, uh, so many hats might have ruined his head. I don't know. But he's a snappy dresser. I'll give him that. I think that's all it might be good for. It. Um, just another question. Has anybody done a wellness check on Jared Stidham today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> is he released or is he? Or just a wellness check. I mean, the poor guy, I mean, getting this news must have yeah, I don't... ruined his life. So, I mean, do you think I don't know if he's going to be around? No, I don't either. I think that he's a, he's another Brian Ho, Brian Hoyer. I almost said Brian Hogan. Uh, Brian yeah. Hoyer, ball boy. Here you go. Hold the balls. Make sure they're I, not deflated. Here we go. Let's get the yeah. job done. And he's what about Brian Hoyer? Down. Where's he going? What about Brian Hoyer too? What's up with um, him? He's going to go to the nursing home. That's where he's going to go. <laughs> hey, you know what? Might be a, a better alternative. A job's a job. One Patriot place this freaking fall. Yeah. Um, they have money, guys. The question is, why, why, why in the living world would this ever be entertained? And that's a great question, Phil. What you brought up is this a depth move? I can't say that it is. I can't yeah. say that right now, unless until I find out more on what the hell's going on. Do we think Belichick's going senile? <laughs> yes. Sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I can be. I can tell you, I've absolutely hated. Him being the general manager. I don't think that's right. I don't know why Robert Kraft or Jonathan allow this to continue, but it's it doesn't work. I don't care how good you are if you're the best football coach in all the land. Get your freaking hands off of the general manager role. Por favor. I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement for sure. So with Cam Newton now back. Who do you think is banging on the door now for the Patriots? Oh, Cam Newton's our guy. I can't wait to sign with this team. This impacts everything. No, I'm not going to cry, but I might. It's and I sound like a whining two-year-old, but I'm sorry. You had the best quarterback ever, and you let him walk. You said you're done. He goes and wins another championship, and I can pretty much guarantee it that he's probably going to damn well do it again. That's that's just, that that bites. It just bites really hard. Yeah. 
It's, I mean, it doesn't listen. And I think it all depends if something else, another championship or something else comes out of it. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it sucks. It sucks to look at it and be like, we had this for X amount of years, almost and you still two could decades have them. That's the worst yeah. part. Yeah. Well, I mean, was he, I mean, I, I think, I think they were done with each other. With I think everyone, all the parties involved, Crap, Belichick, yeah, and, and Brady I agree were done. with that. You know what? And I agree but, with it. And you know what? I I one thousand percent have to blame Belichick. This is all Belichick. This has yeah. nothing to do with anybody else. This is all what Bill has done. You put way too much faith in this guy. Uh, you know, you have all these shiny rings and best coach accolades, but you know what? When your ego gets in the way of things, and Tom's guilty of this too. Don't get me wrong. I'm not all sun, you know, it's not all gun, sun, what do you call it? Gumdrops and roses or something for just Brady. Yeah. Um, they're both to blame, but Belichick for some reason just had to stick it out to Tom. I, I don't know why. I, I hope that we learn more information. We've heard rumblings about behind the scenes drama and, and that sort of oh, stuff. There's, there's going to be a book. There's going to be a couple books it's I'm sure, be. about, about what the happened. The truth will come out and, and it's going to, uh, it's going to be very, very eye opening to learn more about just how Belichick treated Brady. And from what I heard, he treated him like he was a sack of crap. Well, I think he tried to <laughs> treat him like, coach. well, yeah, I think he tried to treat him like he was just one of the guys. And That's one of the reasons him. why I didn't want to play football anymore. Tom, I mean, you would agree. Yeah. You knew I'm not going to name names, but I mean, the crew that I had when I played at Reading, it takes a very, it takes a very tough skinned person to go through not so much abuse, but it, it's, it's, it's demoralizing at times. Yeah, this it's is stupid. How football, it's, it's not just a Reading thing. It's stupid. Other teams and stuff. No, it's it's you know, a, yeah. You don't do this. You you know that that sort of it's yeah. It's, it's much more demanding, and I just I, I wasn't that kind of person, and I I don't I don't get lit up that way. I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't. And if you're no, you get like me. You get lit up by uh, mentioning Matt Barnes or Cam okay. Newton. I get, lit up, to... I get lit up from being in Twitter jail is how I get lit yeah. up. Yeah, they don't know how to reach you. That's all. That's a failing on their part. I want to go positive. That's okay. Phil and I will train you in football. Yeah, I want to go positive. For I'll just throw orange peels at you. That's all I'll do. I won't say a damn thing. I'll just smell like uh, oranges. Um, it's going to be great. I'm going to get my. I'm going to get rid of the scurvy, and you'll, you know. I want to be oh, super positive here. We've been, I've been kind of like miserable and angry and whatever today and angry. Alex. No, not you. No, not me. Fooled all of us. I <laughs> am pleasantly optimistic on how the Red Sox may do this upcoming season. Wow. Yeah. You had said this last time and that I thought was kind of nice. And I, I, and I'm not being I joking. Nice I think, things about I think you're Sox. right. I want to get nice things this year. Maybe something good in my stocking or whatnot for Christmas. But I, I want to be nice to the Red Sox because Alex Cora is back. I've been a big advocate for him. I think it matters tremendously with this team and the players that are there to have a manager that the players can respond to and everything. I think you're going to get better seasons out of J.D. Martinez and Raphael Devers and Xander Bogarts. And I personally think the revenge tour is in effect with this Red Sox team. I'm not calling them World Series, but to be a surprise, to be a wild card or a uh, championship, you know, AL East championship team and to get into the playoffs – I'll I'll be happy with that. I'll be happy with that. It will be a lot different than how it was last year. I think I'll even be okay if I even say an early exit in the first round. I don't know why I'd be saying that, but I think it's probably because the expectation is so low right now. And we want something to be like I say this about I'm the Celtics all the time. I'm not going to be greedy with wanting well, another championship. I mean, if it comes, that's great. And I'll you be just want totally happy for that. You want something competitive. You want to watch something into October. You know. I want like, to watch baseball again. I don't yeah. want to sit there and say, "Oh, the Red Sox are on." Click. I want to watch. I want to believe in the team. So 
So give me a good team, please. Give me that, and I'll be happy. Jackie yeah. Bradley uh, signed with Milwaukee from the last time that we saw you. He's now with the Milwaukee Brewers. So your outfield of Benintendi, Bradley, and Betts, your 2018 World Championship outfield. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So you have Verdugos, and you have uh, this new guy, Danny Santana, who had a really good 2019, was an all-star for the Texas Rangers. He's coming back from an injury last year. He's going to be in the name. Hunter Renfro, who I, who I have, think has a lot of potential. You'll see, uh, I really like the signing of Kiki Hernandez. Okay, he was somebody that was the spark of the Dodgers. He's mm -hmm. going to get a chance to start at second base. You brought in Marwin Gonzalez, a former champion from the Astros. I just hope he was not the bango drum player in the dugout. That's all I care about on that front. Um, your biggest question is going to be pitching. Your pitching and your rotation is still pretty shaky. You need some guys like Rodriguez and Evaldi and Sale to get back and prove to people that they can be healthy. So that's my take on the Red Sox. We'll see how it goes. Their season will be here before you know it. All right. I believe it's actually April 1st. No April Fool's joke on that. I believe they start right around there. So that is the game plan on the Red Sox. Anything else we'd like to add to lovely 100? Yeah, exactly. Speed up time. Um, no, no, I'm all, I'm all good. All right. I think you, you this said one it. of the record books. I'm going to go get something to improve my mood after the Patriots ruined it this morning. So... Hopefully you see me with a lovely smile next time here on another episode of Face the Facts, which will be episode 101. So we'll Happy see 100. Happy 100. Um, I'm hitting the shower. See ya. <laughs>